Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are breaking down the big difference between DDR4 and DDR5 RAM. If you ever wondered that this technical term means and how they affect your computer's performance, you are in the right place. We'll go through the most important aspects, explaining them so anyone can understand, even if you are not a tech expert. The first DDR4 RAM was released in 2014, while the first DDR5 came to market in 2020. The biggest difference is their speed, however this can be confusing as manufacturers of used MTS and MHZ say that the same thing for a while, but they are different measurements. It's always best to refer to MTS when buying RAM. This refers to how many mega transfer or 1 million transfer are done per second by the RAM. RAM modules are made up of transistors that act like switches. They work like the ordinary switch you use to turn light on and off. In electronics, a switch on means one and a switch off means zero. This makes up all the data that runs on your system. When you measure RAM speed by frequency, you're measuring how fast those transistors can switch cumulatively per second. So if your RAM had a speed of 3600 MHz, you can logically expect its transistors to switch a total of 3,600,000,000 times per second. If you are unsure, DDR4 typically has a speed of 1600 to 3200 mega transfer per second, whereas DDR5 has a speed of 4800 to 8400 mega transfer per second. So it's clearly faster than DDR4. This speed can be improved further by overclocking, but you can void your warranty by doing this. Moving on power usage, DDR4 RAM uses 1.2 volts and the DDR5 has a lower voltage of 1.1. Another of the main difference is cost. DDR4 is significantly cheaper than DDR5 RAM. While the price of both has dropped dramatically over the years, DDR5 tends to be about 50% more expensive than DDR4, so unless you're on a strict budget. If you have seen our previous video, we did a lot of comparison between computer components through the Passmark software website. Here, we also use a RAM benchmark to compare the speed of DDR4 and DDR5 RAM. For example, the top read speed of the DDR5 compared to the read speed of the DDR4. As you can see, there is a big difference between the first place DDR4 and DDR5 RAMs. Of course, for a more accurate comparison, we will go to RAM model so that we can examine it more closely. GSKID F4 4000 RAM in DDR4 RAMs and the GSKID F5 6000 DDR5 RAM, which we compared. It was found that DDR5 RAM performed more than 45% better in tests. In the top right speed mode, as you can see, the numbers are better in DDR5 and indicate better performance in right speed. We went back to GSK RAM and here we see that DDR5 RAM performed more than 35% better in right speed in tests. Building on the speed we have found it. If the data transfer rate is how fast a single car is going on our highway, bandwidth is a total number of cars that can pass through them at the same time. DDR4, this is used a single 64-bit data channel per memory module with a standard speed of 3200 MTS. 
Its bandwidth is around 25.6 GB per second. It's perfectly fine, but there are any limitations. It's where DDR5 pulls ahead. Each DDR5 module is actually split into two independent 32 bit channels. It's like having a dual lane highway on every single memory stick. This is new design effectively double the available bandwidth, allowing for a massive 51.2 GB per second or more. For you, that means less waiting when your computer needs to pull lots of data at once, like during video editing or intense gaming. Next, let's look at capacity, how much data a single memory stick can hold. With DDR4, the maximum capacity we'll typically see in the consumer module is 32 GB, with some high health kits reaching 64 GB. It's enough for most people, but there is a slightly. Thanks to more advanced chip design, DDR5 module can hold much more data. They can reach up to 128GB or even more on a single stick. This makes DDR5 work for professional workstations, servers, and anyone who needs to run extremely memory intensive tasks. Now for a quick but important technical detail for touch. This is about how much power of the memory needs to operate. In DDR4, this run at 1.2 volts, it's been the standard for years and it's reliable. In DDR5, it's more efficient, running at a lower 1.1 volts. While this might seem like a small difference, it leads to less power consumption and less heat generation, especially when you have many memory modules running at high speeds. Speaking of power, the way it handles is completely different between the two. On DDR4 system, the motherboard is responsible for managing the power to the memory. With DDR5, a new component called PMIC or Power Management Integrated Circuit is built directly onto each individual memory module. This gives each stick more precise and direct control over its power, leading to better stability and efficiency, especially for overclocking. Latency. Latency is a trickier topic. In simple terms, it's the delay between the CPU requesting data and the memory providing it. It's measured in clock cycle. In DDR4, generally has a lower number of clock cycle for latency. A common value is around 16 cycles. In DDR4 often has a higher number of clock cycles for latency, like 36 or 40. Here's the key, DDR4 cycles are much, much faster. Because of its incredible speed, the real-world delay, measured in nanoseconds, is often similar to or even better than DDR4. So, don't just look at the cycle number, the overall speed often make up for it. As you can see in this image, the first number is CAS latency. The time it takes for the memory to respond the CPU is the CAS latency. But CAS cannot be considered in isolation. As a result, RAM with a slower mega transfer per second rating can actually have lower latency with as a smaller CL rating. For DDR4 module, a CAS latency of 16 is one of the fastest available. Similarly, for DDR5 RAM, CL13 is currently the sweetest spot when it comes to latency for RAM. Second number, TRCD. RAM module uses a grid-based design for addressing. Intersection of rows and columns numbers indicate the particular memory address. Row address to column address delay TRCD measure the minimum latency between entering a new row in memory and beginning to access column with it. You can think of it as the time it takes to RAM to get the address, the time it takes to receive the first bit from a previously inactive row is TRCD plus CI. Third number is TRP, Row Recharge Time. Measure the latency involved in opening a new row in memory. Technically, it measures the latency between the recharge command to either or close one row and activate command to open a different row. It's often identical to second number. The same factor affects the latency of both 
operation. Fourth number is to rest. Row active time. Measure the minimum amount of cycle a row must remain open to properly write data. Technically, it measures the latency between an active command on a row and issuing the pre-charge command on the same row, or the minimum time between opening and closing the row for STRAM module TRCD plus CL calculate T press. ECC error correction is a feature that improves data integrity and reliability. In DDR4, undie ECC was not a standard feature, while server upgrade DDR4 module had external ECC it was not built into consumer memory chips. DDR5, all DDR5 chips have undie ECC built directly into the memory chips. It's correct minor internal data error before they can cause problems, which increases the system stability and allow for higher chip densities. And finally, the most important point for builders and operators, compatibility. In DDR4, this only works on motherboards that are designed for DDR4. Physically, the notch on the memory stick is a specified location that will only fit into a DDR4 slot. In DDR5, this is not backward compatible. It only works on motherboards that are built for DDR5, such as newer Intel and AMD platforms. The notch on the stick is a different location, so you can't accidentally install it in incompatible slot. Always double check your motherboard and CPU to make sure they support DDR5. At the last conclusion, so to summarize, DDR5 is the new kit on the block with some serious upgrade, more speed, more bandwidth, higher capacity, and better efficiency. But DDR4 is a still fantastic and more affordable option for many builds. The right choice depends on your need, budget, and the platform you are running.